Welcome. This video will show you how to add a manufacturer and a quick overview of the manufacturer information screen. So to start, a manufacturer in SBC is the maker of the product. The supplier is the person that you get the product from or the company that you get the product from. So I buy Wix parts from Uniselect. Wix is my manufacturer. Um, Uniselect is my supplier. I buy Kellogg's Rice Krispies from Walmart. Kellogg's is my manufacturer. Walmart is my supplier. So um, the manufacturer code also is the first three characters of the part number um, in the inventory. The reason that we do this is number one, so that we can um, categorize information for reporting purposes. Number two, so we can price things specifically. Um, and number three, so that if you don't have a part in your inventory, you can use these codes to sell stuff anyway, uh, non-stock parts and things like that. I'll show you a quick example of that at the end of this video. I'm going to start by going into Manufacturer Management by clicking on my M key on my keyboard or clicking on the button. And then number one, Add Manufacturers. So when I first come in here, it's going to ask me what store I want to add my manufacturer code for. If I want to add it for all locations, and I have multiple locations, I'm going to click on the All Stores button or press the uh, exclamation point key, and that'll add it for all locations. If for whatever reason I don't want to add it for all locations, whether I use different manufacturer codes at different locations or more likely I don't sell them out of certain locations. You can choose which locations that you want to add this manufacturer into the system for and then any of those locations where you don't sell it, their list will be much cleaner um, than one that's compiled with all of the manufacturers that you might sell anywhere. I'm going to press my enter key to bypass this screen. It's going to show my manufacturer ad for store one. In the left corner I have my new number. I can add a number. Now, if I type in something that already exists, it's going to pop up a message that says record already exists. So I'm going to add AC Delco again just by pressing A underscore C, and that'll add an AC Delco record into my system for my uh, demonstration purposes here. The other way to add a manufacturer is to press my home key and then my F9 button down here at the bottom of the screen. When I do that, I get this window, which there's another video in this collection that shows you how to set this screen up. But what this screen allows you to do is enter each field on the manufacturer display page and what the value um, is, or you can enter the value on the fly, and it allows you to come in here and add all of the valid pieces of information that you want to add from one screen instead of having to add the manufacturer code here and then going out to the display screen. I'm going to press the escape key to exit this and I'm going to go into number three, display alter manufacturers. Again, it's going to ask me which store I want to go for each manufacturer. There's a different record for each store. Um, the reason that is is because we're tracking sales history um, on these screens. I'm going to press the enter key and I'm going to type in ACD for my AC Delco. My description is in the upper left corner. My next field down is my miscellaneous code. I can type in a word here or I can type in different values into different field um, field positions in the miscellaneous code area. So if I wanted to, I could either type in the word, um, you know, I, I don't know, I could add, type in really anything uh, to represent a code, or I could space, 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 and put an L here. And then I could run a report that says that I want to look for an L in the fourth position of that miscellaneous code. So you can use that for anything that you want. Active on website. This is a yes or no question. If you have a website through SBC, you have the opportunity to tell the system whether it displays certain manufacturers. And then this work field here is simply an available field for you to enter anything that you want. I'm going to press the enter key. Now in our purchasing program, we have a couple of ways to set up the purchase order screens. So when you're ordering from a specific supplier, you're ordering the correct vendors. Um, or the correct manufacturers, excuse me. 
So the first way to do that is to go into the purchase order program, tell it that I'm ordering from Uniselect, for example, and then there's a list at the top of the screen that allows me to enter each of the manufacturer codes that I'm going to order from Uniselect. The other way to do that is to set it up here. So I come into the actual manufacturer record and I tell it who my valid suppliers are. Um, the order does matter slightly. Um, so if I put uh, the valid supplier that's coming from my supplier record into the number one field here, my uh, description area here will automatically populate. If I'm allowed a discount um, through different programming in the system, I would enter that discount information here. If you'd like more information about those, give us a call. We can walk you through how those would be applicable. So if I have multiple suppliers, uh, basically this is just going to go through this listing when I'm creating a purchase order. If it finds the supplier in my list, then my manufacturer code um, and the parts associated with that manufacturer code, if they need to be ordered, will display in, on my purchase order. Roundup to first package. We have lots of customers who get stuck on this. They call us and they say, I have a bunch of parts that aren't being ordered and I can't figure out why. What we have, uh, what this question is asking you is, do you want to round up to the first package quantity when you're creating your first, um, when, you're, when you're aiming towards your first package quantity amount. So let's say that my package quantity is 12. If I have seven to order and this is not populated, the system will not order it for me. I need this to be a yes to order up to the first package. Now, subsequent parts after that are kind of dependent on you, but to even get the item to show up on your purchase order, you need to have this populated most of the time. When we find this and we find that this is the reason they're not populated, the customer calls us and say, populate this roundup to first package field with a yes for every manufacturer in my system. It's typically an on-off switch. But if you're setting up a new manufacturer manually, you want to make sure that if you want to order parts up to the first package quantity that you set this to a yes. Alternate order point field. So in your inventory record, you have an order point field. A lot of times people have min and max. Other times they have reorder level. Keep in mind our inventory formats many times are customizable in this arena. Um, you can call almost any field in your inventory your reorder level fields or your order point fields. So this is saying for most of my sales or most of my inventory, I'm going to use my min and max, but perhaps for my AC Delco, I want to look at another field, especially if I'm ordering uh, different things from different vendors. So uh, you have the opportunity to use an alternate order point field, especially if maybe you sell AC Delco um, and you have a number of different manufacturer codes for different departments or different categories of AC Delco parts, you can change your order point field for when you're doing your purchase order. Up in the pricing area, what this allows you to do is it allows you to set a percentage, and this is just a base, it's just a start, but it allows you to set um, a calculation when you're entering the list field price in point of sale. So here's the scenario. Uh, you have an employee who works on Saturdays. They don't know a ton about parts. Maybe it's a high school student or something like that. And so they're selling a part that you don't typically stock in your system. And so instead of you allowing them to come up with the calculations for the pricing, you set it here. So I'm going to actually save this and I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to go into point of sale and show you how this works. I'm going to type in an ACD because that was my uh, manufacturer code and then I'm going to type in my name, hit the enter key, obviously that's not a real part. I'm going to click on non-stocked item in the center here and I'm going to type in test. Press my enter key and type in that I want to sell one of these. When I press the enter key, in this case, if you remember back to the screen, which I'll show you in a second, list was set to zero, but cost was set to 35%. So if I type in a cost here, $50, and I press the enter key, it's going to calculate for me what my list and my sell price should be. 
Now that high school student may know a little bit about these parts. They may know they're really hard to get or something and you might want to raise uh, the list price or they might want to manually raise the list price. Maybe I'm going to change my list to $100 because list doesn't mean anything really anyway. And then I'm going to change my sell price to 80 just so I have a whole number. Um, I'm going to say no on this and then it's going to sell that item for that the, the price that I entered on that part. But what that calculation did for me is it gave me a starting point. So if I have no idea what how to sell these parts, I don't know anything about these parts, you can at least make a gross profit that you'd like to make as opposed to allowing the person who's standing at point of sale to make the decision as to what you're going to sell that part for. So this field over here is set to 35%. You can set it anywhere you want. High gross profit percent and low gross profit percent. Do you want to be alerted to or do you want to run a report to be alerted um, to anything where the gross profit exceeds a certain number or exceeds in the wrong direction another number? So you have the ability to type in uh, the lowest gross profit that you want to make on this part. If the sell price goes below that, you will get an alert on your screen that will tell you that you have gone below that gross profit and you probably want to raise your sell price. History of products sold. So this information we typically reset once a month, but you can reset it on any schedule that you want to reset it on. Uh, typically we were, would report this to you and then reset these. But what's your extended sell of all of the AC Delco parts that you've sold? What's your extended cost? And then your gross profit dollars and your gross profit percent. Your extended cost since your last purchase order goes here. So if you would like to run a report or if you would like to um, understand what your extended cost is since the last time that you ordered uh, from Uniselect, since the last time you created a purchase order for these parts, that information can be displayed there on the right. How many units have, have been ordered by your customers and how many units have you shipped? And then what is your fill percent? Now again, if you don't have your people go into point of sale and adjust the number of pieces sold versus the number of pieces ordered, then your fill percent is always going to be 100 and it's never going to be legitimate. So you may want to make sure that you have your customers, excuse me, you have your employees adjust the number of pieces ordered versus the number of pieces shipped on all their tickets, then you can get a legitimate number for your fill percent. At the bottom of the screen here, I have the ability to click on an Update Plus button. I'll explain that in a second. I can set up tabs if I want to. I can update the screen, press my home to get my cursor down to the bottom of the page, or I can look at some help or get out. So I'm going to click on the Update button. And notice that my buttons at the bottom are now adjusted. So my F9 key is to alter. Remember, F9 is to alter anywhere in SBC. F10 allows me to set up tabs. So if maybe I want to go through five or six manufacturers, I want to set up these pricing areas, and I just want to be able to go to the next record and have my cursor stop right there, I can set up tabs. There is a video on how to set up tabs in this collection as well, um, if you want some help with how to do that. Prior and Next allow me to scroll back and forth between my records. Now you'll notice that my cursor jumped up into my description. The reason that is, is because my Alter button over here is blue, which means I'm in Alter mode. If I click on that and then I press my F1 key again or F2, it's simply going to go to the next record. So if that's annoying you, it's because your Alter button is turned on and you want to click on it again so it turns back to gray so you're not in Alter mode. F3 and F4 refer to the set scan that I've set up in F6. So if for whatever reason I want to look for any of my um, manufacturers here where the valid supplier is Uniselect, I can set up that scan and then F3 and F4 will simply scan to the next record with that criteria instead of going record to record by record by record. F5, like we talked about before, throws my cursor back into the manufacturer code and it allows me to change my manufacturer code. Control F. So if I was in this screen and I was in the altar here, if I click on the Control F to update, notice that it just popped me to my next vendor. 
if I do that again, it's going to not only save the information that I'm changing here, um, 50. I press my enter key, I click on the control F or I click on the update plus and it takes me to my very next record. I'm going to come off of my altar and I'm going to go back to that AC Delco record I was looking at. Control P prints my screen. Uh, control W updates or saves my information if it wasn't saved already. And then my help screens here, again, if I click on those, they'll give me my valid uh, function keys. And then my three character codes, remember these field letters, that's what we call them, field letters, um, are unique. There is a separate unique character code for each one of the fields that I have here. So if I wanted to report on this information or reset it in a stuffing program or something like that, I would come back here and I would get all of these codes from this screen here. You can print this screen if you want to. If you control P, you can print this screen so you have it in your hand when you go to your reporting screen instead of having to write them down or remember what any of those codes are. If you have any questions on any of the information that I've shown you, please call SBC at 800-829-4722 or send us an email at sbctraining at autolog.com. Thank you for your time.